Sup nerds, I'm Tom. And I'm Aaron. And we're taking a look at Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, not to be confused with Castles of Mad King Ludwig, Palace of Mad King Ludwig, or, or Between Two Cities. Cities. Or Between Two Cities Capitals. So many things. It's almost four things. <laughs> So as Tom was saying, this is not to be confused with those other games, even though it draws a lot of its gameplay mechanics from those other games. Uh, the strongest of them would be the Between Two Cities series. This game, it uses the same drafting mechanic that you'd use in that game. You're going to still be working with another player, um, but if you haven't played that game, you should watch a review on that mm -hmm. that we did. Yeah. Actually, Aaron wasn't in that review, I don't think, which means it's it's a good review. <laughs> The premise is that you're working on the Mad King Ludwig's castles, and he's got a bunch of them because he's crazy, and the castles have no rhyme or reason to how they're really built. Like, you can have a really wide castle, a really tall castle. It just kind of depends on how you and the person you're working with decide to place your tiles. And every tile in this game has a requirement of what it wants to be next to. Mm -hmm. And and what he said there about the person you're working with, so there, you are literally sitting between the two castles that you're working on. Mm -hmm. I'm Like if it's me, Wes, and Aaron, so I'm working on this castle that's between me and Aaron. I'm also working on this castle right here that's between me and Wes, and Wes is working on that castle that's between him and Aaron. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to make them both really good because you look at your two, you calculate up your scores for both of them, and then you take whichever one's lower, and that's your score for the game. Um, which is the same thing of Between Two Cities. But like he was just saying, the biggest difference is that there's no real rhyme or reason in between two cities. You had to have a you were a four by four grid, mm -hmm. and it was like categories of tiles. There was like the yellows do this, the blues do that, mm -hmm. and here that's still kind of true. But each individual tile within that category also has its own scoring mechanic. On yeah. It. So if you played the Capitals expansion. For between two cities it's very similar to that where the capitals would be like you get one capital tile it's like okay it wants to be next to a factory and a house so you're like okay i need to get this right here with a factory on this side and a house on this side because i don't want the house and the factory next to each other because then they cancel mm -hmm. each other you know they lose points so it made you really think about you know the placement of all the titles collectively and this one every tile except for the sleeping rooms and, has and something special ones yeah, the special ones, not so much. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, because, they're, yeah, they're all the same. It's just a yeah. big stack of... Yeah, right. they're all... Yeah. But, like, so the sleeping room doesn't... It doesn't matter where it is in the in there. But, like, if you have, you know, the food room, some food rooms want to be next to sleeping rooms or they want to be next to corridors. And the direction it wants to be is different every tile. Like, they might want to be between, like, above and below or it might be left and right. Uh, some of the living room tiles, they're just... They want to be surrounded by a certain type. So you're like, okay... I want to get a whole bunch of this type and just surround this room. But it takes a lot of work collectively to be like, hey, we need to maximize this tile if we can. So you're like, you know, drafting your tiles and putting them out there. What he was just talking about there might lead into like one of my first complaints, which is that the text on the tiles is really tiny. If you like in our, yeah, in a review of Palace of Mad King Ludwig, it was, it was kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Kind of wanna the icons. And where's the... Palace? It's over there. Hold on. Look, it's the same size box. Yeah. <laughs> so these are actually bigger than I was. I was about. To, I would have thought that they'd be the exact same size. So these are actually bigger, and yet the text icons are actually smaller. Yeah, Look at that. This is like in the top so right big. here. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw a picture up there. Like the swan is bigger than the little torch there, and the little Z's right here. Yeah. Um, Look at this sleeping room and this sleeping room. They're the exact same icons. Yeah, and the Zs. This well, I guess these Zs have that square around them for, uh, I guess, color blind, color blind friendliness. No, they're squares all, on all of them. Hmm. Yeah, that that was our complaint in Palace of Mad King Ludwig, was that the things are too small. And while they made the tiles a little bit bigger, the icons are still a little small, especially the where you need them next to, like mm -hmm. the little tiny little black square on top of the white square, and and then the black square below that. That is really tiny mm -hmm. and i almost like didn't even realize that that was tile instruction when i first saw it i was like there's no oh really that's important yeah. to see i think it's because they're trying to show <laughs> off the amazing artwork in this game like the artwork is cool every tile is unique like you know they all have a name this is the scullery so it's like where all the dishes and stuff are and like there's just a ton of stuff going on there's a cat down there playing with 
you know, eating its food and there's, you know, just the water's running. There's just so much detail. So they're like, okay, we like the artwork. We don't want to cover it up. And they like shove the icons down to the bottom. They all work. The icons, they make sense, but like Tom said, they are kind of small. So if you're playing with someone who's blind, you might want to give them a, a magnifying glass. <laughs> blind? <laughs> completely blind. <laughs> like my mom would have a lot of trouble yeah. with this. You know, I mean, she'd probably have a lot of trouble with this game. <laughs> Anyways, for other reasons. What Aaron did say is true, though, because they're all unique and not just categories like in Between Two Cities, they all get different artwork. Even though they're all sleeping rooms, they're all just different bedrooms, which is really cool. And I do like that. I just wish they had sacrificed a little bit more on the artwork to make the... Or just go with really big tiles, but then you need a really big table, really big table. especially yeah. if you play this, this with max players. This already does take up a surprisingly big table uh, footprint, and I'm really glad that the box is this size because the Between Two Cities box... Um, it's that awkward, yeah, smaller size. Because really, like, I, I couldn't even really fit capitals in there. Like, I probably could, but it'd be really tight, and it wouldn't be easy to, to separate capitals mm -hmm. from it. The next layer of depth that this game adds, so I kind of said that this is like the third step if you've played Between Two Cities, Capitals, and, well, Between Two Cities, Capitals, Expansion, and then this would be like the third step because it kind of builds on all those other engines, but then it also adds this new bonus placement where once you place your third room of the same type, you get a bonus. And once you place your fifth room, you get to choose any bonus of the other bonuses. So it's like kind of, well, one of these three bonuses, I guess. It's just you get to place another uh, of the like, towers of the fountains. So I think these are really cool because they did take out one step in this game where you don't have that awkward middle draft where you draft those big tiles. This is just two rounds of you know drafting a bunch of tiles and getting a third room type like okay i got my third sleeping room now i get to place a tower that can get you a lot of bonus points especially if you've been thinking about it and planning towards that is like okay i'm going to be capping off this part of my building and everything below it is an ex is one extra point and if you can you know build kind of high and then cap it off and then throughout the game put a couple more of the basement tiles below it, you can really rack up points. I agree with Aaron that I think this definitely is the third level. I do really like it. I probably still wouldn't use it for showing people. I, I've used Between Two Cities as a uh, an intro like drafting game for people before, um, but just like I wouldn't throw in the Capital expansion at that time, I probably wouldn't throw this in there. But I do, this, I don't know, this might be my favorite because that restriction of five by five for Capitals and four by four is really annoying but i do like the the little mat things that you get for capitals mm -hmm. um so i'm almost kind of wondering if there was a way that they could do that with this like but because there's no restriction but what if there was like oh a, a, what if there was a rooms. mat that you put in between two in between two castles and then like they met or no, like maybe border not. i'll just I, spitball in here they could do something more to the starting room so everybody <clears> starts with one throne room that has its own unique stuff right off the bat that you're already shooting for. So you could add to that where it's like, okay, you have the throne room, but it also starts with a couple extra rooms next to it or something. Or it has some restrictions, like you can't put this here and you can't put that there. Or like your whole castle can't have blue rooms? No. no. That would be too much. But yeah, you can't have a castle anywhere touching this part. A, a, a blue room touching any part of this. That'd be intense. I can see that. I would have to agree with Tom. I believe that Between Two Castles of Mad King Liquid is my favorite of the Between Two genre. Like, this one is just, you know, so much more going on. There's a lot more thinkiness to it. So, like, you just have that little more weight to the game. I mean, it's still a really quick game. It's still two rounds of drafting. Um, they do take a little bit longer because you start triggering these bonuses. And you're like, okay, I get a bonus for placing that. Uh, did this castle trigger a bonus? Did that castle? So there's a little bit of... Little extra steps there, but it's still a very tight game. Uh, the last game we played, it was 66, 66, 61. So, like, we all did a really good job of, you know, balancing our castles. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the person got 66 and 66. But, you know, like, that's still really close. Having, you know, five point spread in the, you know, the, the crappiest of the castles and those other two castles were really good. I kind of see that's how it always goes, unless you're playing with people that don't know what they're doing at all, and they're just placing the tiles. Well, or, yeah. or if you are manipulating that other person, and you're like, no, 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 you don't want that in here, I want this, which is dumb for you to do anyways, because if you put all your focus on one castle, it's the one you don't focus on that you're going to be getting your points from, so why would you even do that? Yeah, you're, you're not going to, you don't want to screw this person over, because then you 
make this ta- like you said, make this yeah. one too good. And that's the dynamic. That guy over. That's the yeah, and that's <laughs> the dynamic in the between two series, anyways, which is really clever. And I'm really glad that they're building more on this line. Mm-hmm. I would be down to see, and it's not just a retheming too. That's what I'm really happy about because when I first saw this, I was a little worried. I was like, mm, are they just going to put the Mad King Ludwig theme on the same game? And I think a lot of people were worried about that, but obviously, no, that's not the case. And of course, these game trays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've probably been looking at them the whole time. They're they're very nice. They hold all the tiles perfectly. They come with lids so that once you put it back in the box and you store it on the side like a crazy person, you're not going to lose all your tiles. And look, and, this one even fits. Oh yeah. Into right there. there. Yeah. And then the lid and then, goes on that. And... Yeah. Oh, lid, lid here. <laughs> Boom! But then, it, like, but then you got to then you got to baggy these up. Unfortunately, yeah, it's like <laughs> uh, it's like what? <laughs> and then tiny epic defenders here used as a little. Eh. <laughs> so if you've played the Between Two Cities game already and you like it and you think that you know it was a little light for your taste and you, you but you did like the way it worked, you need to try this game out. You need to get this game. It's it's great. I like it. Definitely has a little bit heavier, you know. Tile placement, it's still tile placement, so it's not like a crazy, you know, heavy game, but it's still like, there's more to this game. There's the bonuses, there's, you know, there's actually one of the bonuses getting goal cards, which kind of give you another way to, you're like, okay, I want to make my castle really wide because I get a point per width, or I want to make it really tall in one section, or I want to get a whole bunch of sleeping rooms. Like, you want to get those early because you can really shape up the way you're shaping your castle, but... I, I think that if you have the other two, you definitely need to get this one because you just need to complete it. And well, but also, you having those other two clearly means you like it. Yeah. If you like the base game, then you got the expansion for mm-hmm. it. We keep saying other two. Yeah. But you know. but those are Stonemire. This is a combination of Stonemire and Bezier. So oh man, you gotta get. What are we gonna? How are we gonna put the logos on? This to be a logo on my face and the logo on the corner. <laughs> So this is definitely my favorite of them, like I said. No. Good talk. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Aaron that this is my favorite, but it's not necessarily, just because my favorite doesn't mean it's the one I'm going to be playing all the time. I probably will still be playing just base between two cities, but it's possible that I'll like play base two, between two cities and then be like, hey, how about we just jump right into between two castles instead of playing the same game with the expansion. However, I do really like the expansion, so... I'm not, you know, I'm not docking the expansion. Like, I would just wouldn't, nah, I don't know. It's hard, like, it's it's really hard because, you know. It's like between, you know, a rock and a hard place or two castles and you're trying to pick which one to go to. Like, Aaron with his <laughs> jokes. It, yeah, it is hard to choose which one I would play too. If I'm playing with experienced players, it's definitely yeah. going to be this one. And, and that's the thing. Like, if I were to play just regular, like, because I've done that before. I invited people over from my work who've never played games at all, and that was the first game we played. I was like, oh, it's really great because I can sit between you guys, and, you know, I can talk to you about what we're going to put here and what we're going to put there. Mm-hmm. You know, I would probably still would do castles in that particular scenario. But then, uh, wait, what? No. Cities. C- cities. Capitals. Capitals. I would probably do capitals in that. Why do they all have to sound so similar? <laughs> cities, capitals, castles. Come on, guys. Can't we do, like, between two dungeons so to, I'm not going to get those mixed up? Between, between two countries, between two... That's yeah, a C again. Uh, let's see what else could they do. Um, they could do, like, between two aqueducts, <laughs> between two harbors, uh, between two tree houses. Oh. That would be great. Oh, and they just, Two tree houses, and you have a trunk. This is your trunk right there. Just oh, build, man. You build out from it, but, like, you can't go down. You just you have to constantly go up. And out, and then and there's a spatial element because if you hit another person's treehouse, they combine. Oh, that's so man. We should design games. So if any of what we were talking about sounds interesting to you, or if you've played the other two, or you know the the base game and the expansion, um, and you you know want to complete your set, which you definitely should, I highly recommend you click the purchase link that we're gonna have in the description box down below for Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored. I would have to agree with Tom, though. I think that I would have to agree with Tom that I believe between two cities of mad uh, castles. <laughs>